Have you ever watched a movie that really stuck with you? There's this old film from 1961 that's quite a ride. It's called Judgment at Nuremberg. It's about what happened after World War II and how they held trials for the bad guys. This movie makes you think hard about what's right and wrong. It's not just about the past, it's about how people act. I first saw it a while ago, and it really made me think. The stories in the movie are surprising, sad, and even funny sometimes. But mostly, they make you wonder about how people can do such terrible things. What about you? Have you seen it? If you have any stories or thoughts, feel free to share them. So, if you're up for a movie that will make you think, Judgment at Nuremberg is the one to watch. Get ready for a journey through history and human behavior that will stick with you long after the credits roll. How Criminalistic Humans Can Get to Be The movie is rich with content that tackles mainly human nature and how we all tend to judge each other while having crimes of our own that are no less inhumane than those whom we are judging. One memorable scene involves the lawyer Maximilian Schell highlighting the brutality of Americans during World War II when they atomically bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. This echoes Margaret Thatcher's statement in her book The Path to Power where she defends the bombing of Japan. The film delves into the issue of using cruel measures against humanity under the guise of duty, a theme still relevant today with countless crimes being committed in the name of duty without judgment. Another compelling scene involves Maximilian Schell psychologically manipulating a witness, Judy Garland, to confess something untrue. The film captivates with its stellar cast, including Spencer Tracy as the judge, Lancaster portraying the lead Nazi, and performances by Marlene Dietrich, Richard Widmark, and Montgomery Clift. Not your average war film, but a brilliant portrayal of a fascinating story. American judges arrive at Nuremberg to preside over the trial of four high-ranking Nazis. The movie is monumental, providing insight into a crucial historical event. It's remarkable how the trial, which was actually broadcast on TV, is realistically depicted. The film's use of camera angles and techniques keeps it engaging despite primarily being set in the courtroom. The performances, especially by Maximilian Schell and Spencer Tracy, are outstanding. William Shatner's appearance in the U.S. uniform adds to the allure. For those interested in the events at Nuremberg, I recommend checking out the Rise of the Nazi Series 4 on BBC iPlayer. Despite not being a crowd pleaser, this film is highly regarded and worth watching. In a famous movie called Judgment at Nuremberg, many well-known actors came together to make it special. Judy Garland, who came from a family with a long history, brought her amazing talent to the film. William Shatner, known for his role in Star Trek, had his work playfully mocked in another movie called Robocop. And then there was Burt Lancaster, a really famous actor who gave a performance that people still talk about today. All these actors made Judgment at Nuremberg a movie that people remember for a long time. Sir Lawrence Olivier was initially chosen for the role of Ernst Janning. Despite his rising career and happy marriage, Richard Widmark faced stress in the 1940s due to his inability to serve in World War II and his brother's capture by the Nazis. Judy Garland's rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow became widely played during the COVID-19 pandemic across solid gold radio stations. In the 1961 movie, Spencer Tracy portrayed a character described by Harold Clerman as the epitome of the universal American honest, calm, and considerate. Tracy's portrayal was marked by his genuine demeanor and lack of pretense. Marlene Dietrich, another notable figure in the film, experienced a significant loss in her childhood when her father, a Berlin police lieutenant, passed away after a horse riding accident when she was just 10 years old. Additionally, Werner Klemper, who starred in the film, had a long-standing relationship with Kim Hamilton before they married in 1998, two years prior to his death. In 1961, a film stirred controversy over Judy Garland's Oscar loss in 1954. Groucho Marx lamented her defeat, likening it to a significant theft. The movie was the sole Best Picture nominee that year, also vying for Best Costume Design in Black and White. Among its cast was Werner Klemperer, notably known as Colonel Klink from Hogan's Heroes. He, a German Jew, fled Nazi Germany and agreed to portray Nazis only if depicted as despicable. Klemperer's role in the film embodied this agreement. It's a narrative that has resonated since then, prompting discussions about the intricacies of Hollywood's politics and awards. 
In the 1961 movie Judgment at Nuremberg, Spencer Tracy, who won an Oscar for playing Father Edward Flanagan in Boys Town, joins a list of 18 actors who won the award for portraying real-life individuals who were still alive at the time of the ceremony. Other recipients include Gary Cooper, Patty Duke, Robert De Niro, and Meryl Streep. Judy Garland, known for her iconic role in The Wizard of Oz, faced struggles with addiction early in her career due to the pressure from producers to maintain her image. She visited six different doctors for prescription drugs without each knowing about the others leading to her addiction. William Shatner, famous for his role in Star Trek, ventured into writing with the Tekwar series, a collection of science fiction books unrelated to his acting career. These books were adapted into made-for-TV movies and a short-lived series where Shatner also took on directing and acting roles. In the charming town of Roxbury, Connecticut, nestled among beautiful hills and peaceful scenery, Richard Widmark found peace and inspiration. Away from the busy world of Hollywood, Widmark honed his acting skills and made a home here. His presence brought a touch of elegance to the quiet community, where locals often saw the esteemed actor wandering the streets or enjoying a moment in the local cafe. In the world of theater, William Shatner, known for playing Captain Kirk in a popular sci-fi series, faced a new challenge. Asked to play a role in a play, Shatner felt unsure if he could bring depth to the character. But encouragement came from Billy West, an experienced actor whose advice gave Shatner the confidence to take on the role enthusiastically. Meanwhile, in Hollywood, Burt Lancaster, a significant figure in film, mourned the loss of his granddaughter, Keith Kristen Lancaster. Her passing left a hole in his heart. Yet, amidst his sorrow, Lancaster found strength in their memories and the love they shared. Today, Keith Kristen rests beside her father, serving as a reminder of life's fragility and the enduring ties of family. These personal stories intertwined with Hollywood's history add depth to the tales we love. They show us that behind every performance and movie, there are individuals with their own successes, challenges, and sorrows. Their stories, both on and off screen, continue to captivate audiences worldwide. And in the end, these narratives live on, captured in the world of cinema. In the 1961 movie Judgment at Nuremberg, Burt Lancaster was initially interested in portraying Don Vito Corleone in The Godfather before Marlon Brando secured the role. However, he was never seriously considered for it. Meanwhile, actors Werner Klemperer and Howard Kane, who appeared in Judgment at Nuremberg, later starred in TV's Hogan's Heroes as Colonel Wilhelm Klink and Major Wolfgang Hutchstetter, respectively. Spencer Tracy, another prominent figure in the film, was described by Katherine Hepburn as possessing a timeless quality akin to an old oak tree or the essence of summer and wind a symbol of a bygone era when men were stalwart in principle. In a notable nod to the verdict from 1982, a scene reminiscent of Judgment at Nuremberg features Spencer Tracy attempting to reach Marlena Dietrich, whereas in the former, Charlotte Rampling seeks Paul Newman. The scene in the verdict was crafted by director Sidney Lumet, who, along with Judgment screenwriter Abby Mann, shared a background in the 1950s CBS TV series Studio One. During filming, Montgomery Clift, originally scheduled for five days of work, chose to forego his usual drying out process between acting jobs. Instead, he openly consumed alcohol throughout the shoot, often pouring vodka into an orange juice carton. Judy Garland's financial struggles in the 1960s stemmed from overspending, periods of unemployment, and embezzlement by her business manager. The IRS garnished most of her concert revenues in the late 1960s. Her financial woes, coupled with her drug addiction and erratic behavior, contributed to the dissolution of her marriages and estrangement from her children prior to her passing. 